All right, so in the last lecture, we kind of looked at gradient descent algorithm. And uh, we found that gradient descent with a step size of 1 over L. So we assume that F is L smooth and convex. So this has a I mean in some sense we saw that 1 over L was a suitable choice for the learning rate, right? And we looked at this particular theorem, so let me rewrite it. It's convex and L smooth. Uh, and then for gradient descent. with step size 1 over L, we have ok. So, this is like order 1 over k kind of convergence. And as I said, uh, you, as we discussed in the last class, this 1 over k, you can equate this to epsilon and that means if you want to be epsilon close to the optimal solution, you have to have order 1 over epsilon number of iterations, ok. So, that means in order to be epsilon, in order to make this different epsilon close to each other, so you have to have these many iterations. So, let us look at a way to basically, let us derive this particular result. And the question, the natural question that we are going to be answering is uh, and that is through the subsequent uh, maybe in this lecture and maybe the uh, next lecture. So, right now we know that if we want to be epsilon close, we would need to have order 1 over epsilon number of iterations, but can we accelerate this even further? So, there are two ways to accelerate it, either you assume more structure on your function. So, let us say if I also make f to be strongly convex, then that means we are assuming more structure to the function. So, for this restricted class we can possibly uh, accelerate even the gradient descent algorithm. The other way to accelerate optimization is you do not assume further structure into your uh, into the function, but maybe you assume more structure or maybe you would come up with a different type of algorithm. And that is another way to accelerate uh, optimization of a particular function. So, that is that is what we are going to do in today's lecture ok. But this is the first result that we are going to be deriving all right. So, what do we know? f of x is uh, L smooth, right? And from last lecture, we know that using Taylor's expansion, this is going to be true, right? This is since f is L smooth. Is everyone with me on this? All right. So, what do we know about this function f? It is L smooth and convex, right? So, somewhere we would have to use the convexity argument, and the only way, or at least by looking at what kind of grade like uh, terms we have on this right hand side, that gives us idea as to how to uh, suitably use this argument. And for this, what we are going to do is we are going to add and subtract terms. So, so I am include instead of x k plus 1, I am writing x here and this ok. So, just adding and subtracting x to it and the last term is there as it is. Now, is there a way for me to use convexity? So, what does this term because f is convex, what is the first order condition for convexity? So, this should be less than this will be less than equal to f of x right. So, basically this allows us to rewrite everything as 
of x k plus 1. plus ok. Alright, so how do we proceed further? So, what else do we know? So, we know that f is convex, we have used this. We know that f is L smooth, we have used this. What else we can use from this statement? That it is a gradient descent algorithm, right? With a step size 1 over L. So, obviously, the final thing that we can use is x k plus 1 is x k minus 1 over L uh, gradient of f of x k. So, this is because we run gradient descent with step size 1 over L, right. And this basically allows us to write gradient of f of x k in terms of x k and x k minus 1 x k plus 1 ok. So, you can do a bit of algebra and you can show that this basically comes down to f of x k is less than f of x plus I think L by 2 x k minus x square minus L over 2 k plus 1 minus x. So, this is uh, I mean you can just substitute this value back and then uh, you can with little bit of algebra you can show that this is what it comes down to ok. So, let us call this equation 1 and in this equation if I choose let us say if I choose x to be x k or let us say let us no, yeah, let's, let, let's say I choose f to x to be x k. So, what do we get f of x k plus 1 is less than or equal to f of x k. The second term is 0 and the third term is L by 2 So, this implies that if this difference is non 0 then f of x k plus 1 is strictly less than f of x k right if this difference is non 0 and therefore, it is a decreasing sequence decreasing sequence the optimal value is going to be f star bounded from below. So, it is going to be con it we know that uh, bounded like if the sequence is monotonic and bounded it is going to converge right. So, so this is decreasing sequence and we know it converges ok. So, that is one thing everyone with me on this. So, in the same equation 1 so, if I choose x to be x star ok. So, let me revisit equation 1. So, I get f of x k plus 1 less than equal to f of x star wait f of x star or which is f star then you get l by 2 x k minus x star and l by 2 x k plus 1 minus x star right. So, let us do that. So, do you now see the result coming up from here? How can we do that? So, we just take this to the left hand side and ok and then we just do a telescopic sum or just sum it over from. So, if I just sum it over both left and the right hand side from k equal 0 to let us say k some let us say capital K or ok. So, that gives me So, what does the right hand side evaluate to? 
so you get L by 2 x naught minus x star square minus L by 2 ok. So, this is less than or equal to L by 2 ok. Is this clear? Right? And what do we know about f of x k? It is a decreasing sequence. So, this is bounded from below. So, this term essentially is greater than or equal to or let me rewrite it. We know that this summation because it is a decreasing sequence right. So, now from here what do we get k plus 1 f of x k plus 1 minus f star that is less than equal to l times l by 2 and this basically gives us a result which is Is this clear to everyone? So, this is a gradient descent when function is L smooth and convex ok. So, in the last class we also looked at something called rates of convergence and the idea was so if, if we have a sequence f of x k plus 1 minus f star. limit k goes to infinity this is equal to rho and rho uh, let us say also consider q here. So, this was the rate of convergence now this value rho. So, let me so if rho is equal to 1 what do we call? So, we call it sub linear convergence. If rho is a number between 0 and 1, we call it linear convergence. And if rho is equal to 0, we call it super linear convergence. What happens if rho is greater than 1? not even convergent right it is a diverging sequence because this ratio let us say for q equal to 1 this ratio would start diverging if rho is greater than 1 right. So, we only consider the ranges rho is equal to 0 rho between 0 and 1 and rho equal to 1 and based on which based on the value of rho we define the uh, rate of convergence whether it is sublinear, linear or super linear is this clear. So, what is the rate of convergence in this gradient descent algorithm here? So, let me so for gradient descent we assume f is L smooth and convex. So, f of x k plus 1 minus f star divided by f of x k minus f star. So, this is equal to k over k plus 1 right and limit k goes to infinity what is this term what is the limit for this 1 right. So, this limit is 1 which means sublinear convergence. So, gradient descent for L smooth function it is sublinear convergence.
ok. Is this thing clear? So, k goes to infinity this is uh, this one k plus 1. So, yeah I mean in most cases you I mean yeah it is less than equal to but I mean you usually write order 1 over k kind of convergence right. So, that is what yeah ok. So, we know that the other thing that uh, we can notice from here I mean that we have something something that we have already mentioned you get order 1 over so, number of iterations required is order 1 over epsilon right. So, so we have an algorithm which is gradient descent and the case that we assume is L smoothness or L smoothness plus convexity and for this number of iterations required is order 1 over epsilon. Now, as I said uh, you can in basically provide faster convergence guarantees in two ways either you assume more on your function. So, you assume that function is let us say it is strongly convex and because you are now dealing with the restricted class of function you can provide better convergence guarantees or you change the algorithm right. So, let us first look at the gradient descent itself, but we assume more. So, we assume that the function uh, is strongly convex. So, gradient descent So, what are the assumptions? So, again in discrete time in most cases we always assume uh, that uh, like when we talk about convergence rates implicitly it is assumed that the f is always L smooth. So, L smooth the second assumption is that f is convex and the additional assumption that we make is f satisfies PL inequality. So, what was PL inequality? So, 1 over 2 mu ok. So, this was the PL inequality and we, we showed that every strongly convex function satisfies PL inequality the converse may not be true right. But then if we know that f is convex and f satisfies PL inequality unless f is a constant function these two assumptions together implies f is strongly convex or f is mu strongly convex ok. So, we assume that f is L smooth and f is mu strongly convex. So, under these two assumptions let us see if we can derive uh, a better rate of convergence ok. So, so let me write the theorem first. If f is L smooth and mu strongly convex then for gradient descent with well with step size 1 over L we have So, earlier this term was 1 over 2 k plus 1 right ok. So, when we looked at the non strong con strongly convex case what was this term equal to? This was like 1 over k plus 1, but now the same term is this particular term. Over. So, 1 over k plus instead of having 1 over k plus 1 you get this kind of uh, coefficient sitting in front 
So now if I try to talk about the rate of convergence, so this would be what? So limit k goes to infinity f of x k plus 1 minus f star. So this is of the form 1 minus mu over L right, which is a number strictly less than 1 right. So that means linear rate of convergence. So we have already established in previous lectures that mu is less than or equal to L right. So this number is, is a number between 0 and 1. It may include 0 depending on whether mu is equal to L, but uh, otherwise mu is let us say strict less than L. So in that case it is this particular term is less than 1 and you get linear rate of convergence. Okay. Let us see how we can obtain this particular result. So this is uh, basically again using the Taylor's expansion and the fact that f is L smooth. So since f is L smooth, so this particular statement is true. So now we want to use the fact that uh, we somehow want to first of all write everything in terms of gradient of f of xk. Why? Because we want to use PL inequality, right? Since it is a gradient descent, xk plus 1 minus xk is what? minus 1 over L gradient of f of xk. Since this is gradient descent, so gradient descent ok. So therefore, if I substitute for xk plus 1 minus xk, if I substitute this uh, for minus 1 over L gradient of f of xk, so what do I get f of xk plus 1. So which basically is equal to f of xk minus 1 over 2l right. So we now got a term which is norm gradient square and we know since f is strongly convex or satisfies pure inequality, we can actually write this in terms of f of x and f star right ok. So that was the reason why we uh, why we wrote it the way we wrote it because we somehow want to use this particular uh, inequality and in order to use that pure inequality I can rewrite this as minus mu over L times 1 over 2 mu and this is less than or equal to f of xk minus mu over L f of xk minus f star ok and this follows from pure inequality. Is this clear? Which basically tells you that f of xk plus 1 minus f star is less than or equal to 1 minus mu over L f of xk minus f star ok. And if I apply this from k equal to 0 to k plus 1, what do I get? f of xk plus 1 minus f star is less than or equal to 1 minus mu over L k plus 1 f of x naught minus f star. Now we want the result in, in the form of x naught and x star, but what do we have here f naught and f star right or f of x naught and f star. So how can we get that? So if I, if I want the result in terms of something uh, as L over 2 x naught minus x star, 
So somehow we have to use the L smoothness of the function. And for that, if I look at this particular term or this particular equation or inequality over here and I choose, so let me rewrite this. So is, is this clear to everyone? So let us call it equation 1, right. And since function is L smooth, we know that f of y So this comes from L smoothness, okay. And if I choose y, if I set y to be x naught and x to be x star, what do I get? f of x minus x naught minus f star. What is the gradient of the function at x star? 0, right? It is an unconstrained minimization. So, the gradient is 0. So, this term becomes 0 and we are left with L by 2 of right and that is how we can replace this term with this particular. So, this gives us So, this completes the proof, okay. So, what is the rate order of convergence here? So, earlier we had order 1 over k kind of convergence, right. When we looked at the simple gradient descent, it had order 1 over k kind of convergence and the number of iterations was order 1 over epsilon iterations, right. So, what is the order of convergence here? Now, if I look at the complexity, so this is order, this kind of complexity, right? So, that is the complexity of this algorithm. And as I said, if I want, if you want to derive the number of iterations, what do you need to do? Set this to epsilon, right? So, let us say I equate this to be epsilon to be equal to epsilon. So, we, we basically get 1 minus mu over L k is equal to epsilon. In order to derive the number of iterations, basically I want to get a value of k in terms of epsilon, right. So, in order to do that, you just take the log on both sides. So, you get k log 1 minus mu over L is log epsilon. Log 1 minus x, you can approximate this using minus x. So, this would be k times negative mu or l is log epsilon or implies that k equal to ok. So, that means if you want to be epsilon close to your solution, the number of iterations. So, number of iterations. So, L over mu log 1 over epsilon iterations, okay. So, if you want to be epsilon close, this is the number of iterations that you have to spend. So, in the, in the previous case, we had one over order 1 over epsilon, but now we have order log 1 over epsilon, right. And that means we need fewer iterations to be epsilon close because uh, log of x, uh, it, I mean compared to x, it grows slowly, right. So, you require fewer iterations to con to be epsilon close to your solution. So, now if I look at the algorithm and I have gradient descent here, then for convex f we had order 1 over epsilon for strongly convex setting. And by the way, this term L over mu or mu over L, uh, that is something that you would see often in deriving rates of convergence. 
even in uh, much more complex problems, you would see that this term plays a significant role, uh, right? So this is this is for the gradient descent algorithm when we looked at the convex setting and the strongly convex setting, and in both cases, so in, in this case, the rate of convergence was sublinear. In this case, the rate of convergence is linear, and these are the number of iterations, right? Number of iterations needed.